Welcome back to Heiner's Workshop Lessons. This is another episode of Off-Grid Auto Electrics. And today we're gonna look at And today we're gonna look at how to design your electrical system for your off-grid setup. So what we need to establish first is how much energy you're gonna be using, how much energy you're gonna be needing. Most people start with the products that they want, which is usually the wrong way around. Uh, we see that a lot in the shop here when people are coming in. So the first step, the first questions that we usually ask is, what are you gonna be running? How long are you going to be stationary for? And how long have you got to recharge the batteries when you are driving? So we're going to walk you through these things step by step today. So when we're going to ask you how much energy you're going to be needing, how much energy you're going to be using every day, obviously that varies a lot. So we take into consideration what size your fridge is, uh, what inverter you're gonna be running, what lights you're gonna have. If you have a hot water system of electricity, you might be running a travel body and do uh, cooking in an electric way like that. And there's other little bits and pieces. So when we do these calculations, it's obviously, it's just estimates. So the energy that you're gonna be consuming is gonna be estimated. Because for example, a fridge can use very little energy in winter when you just got it closed and it's just keeping things cold. But if you use a fridge in summer, it's completely different. You might be out on a, on a trip with your crew and uh, it's gonna be stinking hot and you've got about five cartons of hot beer going through that fridge every day. So obviously then the fridge is gonna use a whole lot more energy than it would be in winter. So we just estimate the power consumption and we try to get it Right, so it's not 100%, but it will get you close enough. And we're trying to work off worst cases as much as possible. As per usual, we've prepared a PDF that you can download. The link you will find in the description of the video. And you've got a whole list in there about what a small to medium fridge uses. Also, when you have it set as a freezer and your hot water systems, your travel buddy, your self I go. I've tried to cover a whole lot of components and you can see in that list how much energy they're gonna be needing per day. So once you've got that established, you just add the amp hours up, uh, you will find your baseline of what you're usually gonna be using each and every day. After that, the next question you have to ask yourself will be, how long will I be stationary for maximum? And it's really important that you don't go, oh, usually I do weekend trips, there's only this one or two trips a year where I'm stationary for two weeks. That is the important one. That is what you need to calculate off. Because otherwise, if you design your system so that it's usually okay for two days, but then you go for two weeks, it's obviously not gonna perform very well. Uh, when it comes to how long will you be driving to recharge those batteries, that's usually the time in between the longer stays, then your worst case scenario is the shortest time period. So let's say you do four day trips, and in between those trips, or let's say four day stays, and in between those stays, you only drive for three hours, but usually you drive six, seven hours. Those three hours, they are the important ones. You have to make sure with the minimum driving time, you still be able to recharge your battery system, or at least be aware of that you might not be recharging it fully. That is really important for you to know. This is Luke, he is one of our workshop staff. So Luke, let's design your system. Cool. What are you planning to do with your car? So I have a 40 litre fridge. Yeah. Um, I have two roof work lights that yeah. we use for camping. Yeah. Um, I also own a travel buddy. Yeah. Um, obviously charging phones, iPads, stuff like that. Um, hot water system for showers. Yeah. What size is your hot water system gonna be? It's a six litre. All right. Hot water system. Yeah, run off 12 volt? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Which also would need, I need a water pump as well. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And do you plan on uh, charging that once a day or twice a day? Uh, once a day. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. That will work. Uh, have you got anything else in there? Uh, for future plan, probably inverter, but that's. Okay. Way down the track. Two cars. That's probably the basic, simple 
okay. system first. Cool. Yeah. All right. That should be quite easy. So, uh, what do you reckon? How long will you be stationary maximum when you go out traveling? For the long trips at the end of the year, I'd probably maximum a week. Yep. Um, but yeah, then during the years, weekend. In your in your driving cycle, how long will you be driving in between one camp spot to the other camp spot, roughly? Uh, approximately four hours. Okay, cool. That makes sense. So to put that together uh, with the list that I've got here, so I would say you've got a medium fridge that will use about 35 amp hours and uh, your phones and lights like head torches or hand lamps and stuff like that, iPads, whatever you might have. Another 10 amp hours, your camp lights on the car, depending on the runtime, but we can say 10 amp hours as well. Yeah. Water pump doesn't use a lot, water pump, five amp hours, that's plenty. You can leave the water pump running for an hour. Okay. Usually if you do that, you run out of water already. So we're quite yeah, yeah. safe to say that's five amp hours. Uh, the travel buddy, if you cook for about two hours, will probably use about 24 amp hours. This is all based on a 12 volt system. So the amp hours will change when you run a 24 or 48 volt system. If you want to know how to calculate the differences, watch the first video. We've explained how the different voltages affect the amp hours. Uh, also your hot water system. If you use a six liter hot water system, uh, like the ones we always use from OSJ, you, depending on the water temperature where you start off, uh, but a worst case scenario, you use about 25 amp hours to recharge that completely to 70 degrees, which will give us a total of roughly 100 amp hours per day. Okay. So that is what you're going to be consuming in 24 hours. And as a rule of thumb, I usually say, if you want to make sure that you can stay out there long enough, even without charging, make yourself self-sufficient for 48 hours. So for what you're planning, it might seem like a bit of an overkill and obviously you can reduce the times where you say, I'm going to be happy to only be 24 hours self-sufficient without charging or 36. 48 is usually quite good because if it's raining for 48 hours, you probably stop camping where you are anyway and you keep traveling. Uh, but that means that we would end up with a 200 amp hour usable capacity. If, if that is AGM or if that is lithium, that's another discussion, but you need 200 amp hour of usable energy out of that battery. Yep. Uh, to recharge, what we usually do, that is obviously here in Australia, we base our recharge on solar energy. It is just, over here it's the easiest. When you are somewhere else in the world, you might as well use wind energy or whatever else is easily available to you. But over here, if we use a 300 watt solar blanket, for example, that will give us about 100 amp hours of energy back into the battery per day, give or take. Obviously a bit less in winter, a bit more in summer, but it works quite well that way. So 200 amp hour battery, 300 watt solar blanket, uh, that can just be put flat on the ground. You don't really have to angle that. It's usually too hard. And if you angle it slightly off, you're usually better off just putting it flat on yep. the ground. It's easier as well. Yep. And if that's not enough, just get a bigger solar blanket. That's how <laughs> I see it anyway. Uh, to make sure you can recharge in four hours, you would need a 50 amp charger. Uh, or at least 50 amp charge current. If that just comes directly from an alternator or through a DC-DC charger is another topic. But if you can charge 50 amps for four hours, you can completely recharge your battery within your driving cycle. Yeah. Okay. So that should be the, what do you call it, the foundation of your system. So the, these three things, the battery capacity, the DC-DC charger or charging capacity and the, the solar, when you get these three things right, you know that your system is gonna work and you're not gonna run out of power in yeah. the bush. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really the basics established. Is that clear to you? If you have you got any questions in that regard? Just why would you go for a 50 amp BCDC charger? 
All right, so, so to say a 25 or a 40. That's definitely a very good question. I know you know the answer, but it's good that people will actually get the idea as well to make it a bit easier. So if you get 50 amp charge current and you do charge with 50 amp for four hours, it will give you 200 amp hour recharge battery. If you would use a 25 amp charger, then you would need eight hours to recharge 200 amp hours into your battery. So that's why we go for the high charge current to make sure we put that energy quick enough back into your battery. And uh, the 300 watt solar blanket is obviously also based on about six, seven hours of full production. That in winter will be less, obviously, but in summer you get more. But the good thing about that is your fridge has to work harder in summer uh, and less in winter. So it sort of evens itself out a little bit. Yeah. So in the next lesson that we're going to film, we will go deeper into the detail of what battery should I use? What charger should I use? And there we're talking what solar charger, what DC DC charger, what 240 volt charger. We cover all of that. And then in even the next episode after that, we will be talking about how to design your solar system in a way that it will do what you want it to do while you're camping. All the parts that you need for these projects are obviously available from perthpro.com.au or you can come directly into our shop in Basewater in Perth and you get some first-hand knowledge from the guys who sell the parts here or you can also book in a quote obviously. If you got any questions, please put them in the comments below. So we'll try to pick them up for the next episode and answer them as good as possible. Uh, otherwise, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to, that would be great. Thank you very much and see you for the next one.